A huge shout out to VRWay for sponsoring and supporting this channel. They do produce the best lens inserts that I've come across for a full range of VR headsets that include HTC, of course Pimax, which you're looking at right now, as well as the Quest, Valve, PSVR 2, you get the idea. And the great thing about lens inserts is they help keep your lenses free from scratches, but also they do account for astigmatism if you're nearsighted or farsighted. And with blue light filters, they also help combat motion sickness and insomnia. So make sure to check out my 5% discount in the description below. Hello folks, an exciting video today. We're testing out NVIDIA's new Transformer Model 2 DLSS 4.5. Sounds a bit techy. I guess it is. But in theory, the idea is, is it's everything we love about DLSS 4, only it should be sharper with less ghosting. And also, I'm going to show you how to enable it the easy way. So if you're interested, stick around, stay tuned. This is my first impressions of using DLSS 4.5 as well. And uh, yeah. So I'm going to now switch on these beautiful displays for the first time. I'm using a glass cockpit on purpose because I want to see if it's sharper uh, when using. In fact, I can, I can already tell straight away. That's interesting. So it is sharper, but it's um, synthetically sharp. You know, I'm a massive fan of TAA mode when it comes to glass cockpits. I'm using presets... Um, Al for this first test. We're going to try both today and I'm not going to take long before I tell you how to do it uh, because well I'll tell you now. Basically all you need to do is download the latest version of DLSS Swapper. Also make sure you're running the latest Nvidia driver. I'll put on the screen now what that actually is and once you've done that navigate to the uh, driver section of the DLSS 4 Download, right, in fact, you don't have to do that to be fair, but you can download it through there or you can just go to a Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and perhaps 2020 and all your other games as well and basically click on the version you can see at the top there. I think it's 310.5 now. That is DLSS 4.5. Basically, swap it, download it. You can also do that for frame generation as well because DSS 4.5 will give you six times multiplier on your frame gen. But of course, for VR, that's not really applicable and that's what we're going to try today. So that's how you do it. If that's all you want to know, thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon. But uh, if you want to stick around, I'm now going to try and test it using uh, preset AL and then preset M. At the moment, we're getting 45 frames per second. That's what's recording. I'm running everything very high, a bit higher than my VR settings guy, which I've now posted on the channel. So thanks, folks, for uh, watching that and all your support. Did take me a while to make that, so I'm glad it's uh, done fairly well. Because honestly, these VR settings guides, to do them properly, you need to spend weeks testing all your settings across multiple PC systems. So basically, in terms of the graphical fidelity, shall we say, it's kind of what I expected. This is why I've chosen this aircraft, because the thing is about DLSS 4 is for steam gauges like these, they look very nice and sharp. They look really good. But for glass cockpits, and this is more of an Asobo thing, really, we do need a mask to basically be able to use these screens in TAA mode whilst everything else should be in DLSS 4. Now I believe DCS World can do that now and they always seem to be a step ahead when it comes to VR but Asobo that's something they do need to look into right anyway let's now crack on do a quick circuit I'm looking for ghosting now on this tape here you see that that's actually very good. In fairness, that's pretty damn good. You would normally see a lot of ghosting. But as you can see here, hopefully because I'm, I'm zooming in on purpose to show you this speed tape. That's actually pretty clear. So I can definitely tell that's improved. Which is great because smearing and ghosting is a thing with DLSS 4. Because of the algorithms doing their thing in the background. And sometimes you just can't work fast enough. It's getting better all the time. 
But, uh, yeah, that is a big improvement there. Um, in terms, again, of the sharpness, I mean, it's, it's okay, but I don't think this is going to be TAA mode for me when it comes to um, crisp image of these glass cockpits. And that's an important distinction to make. And I've already said it, I'll say it again. For glass cockpits, I still feel TAA mode is the best way to enjoy VR. If you can, well, if your GPU can handle it, that's the full fat native resolution. But to be honest, for most, you know, flying scenarios, especially this sort of thing where you're kind of sightseeing and enjoying the scenery, this feels very nice and is perfectly fine for DLSS 4. Is it an improvement? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Especially when it comes to ghosting. So in essence, basically DLSS 4.5 is the second gen transformer model with improved temporal stability and dynamic six times frame generation. Okay. Obviously the frame generation isn't something we're going to benefit from in VR, which is a shame. It'd be great to see it working, but that's not a thing. So at the moment, as I say, I'm using Preset Al. And Preset Al, I'm going to read off this here, is a is the default preset for Ultra Performance Mode. It delivers a sharper, more stable image. Oh, okay. With less ghosting than Preset J and K from DLSS 4.0. Um, but the expense of performance... Preset L is peak performance on RTX 40 series GPUs. That's something else I want to mention, guys. I know I'm running a 5090 here, but it doesn't matter. This, you can try this with an RTX 20, 30, and 40 series. You're going to benefit from this, folks, okay? So it's not just for the high-end 50 series um, owners. That's really important. So, interestingly, so I'm now going to try Preset M, which, according to this delivers similar image quality improvements as preset L, but closer in speed to preset K and, uh, J and K. So I should get an uplift in performance. I mean, it does look good. Bearing in mind, before I do that, actually, I'm going to try, because I'm using balance mode at the moment, and I'm getting about 46, 40, yeah, about that sort of frames per second. If I'm not recording, folks, that does shoot up to way past 50 frames per second, okay? And I'm running everything very very high basically on ultra settings ultra clouds ultra shadows everything just to kind of tax the system and this is real weather at the moment as well and there's a lot of heavy cloud around right anyway so let's now try dlss4 using quality mode because i'm using balanced at the moment which is my sort of recommendation balanced basically does what it says on the tin it's the sweet spot between you know decent image quality and good performance but let's just try balance mode and see what that does to our frame rate okay so we're now using quality mode and i can't really tell a difference in the fps numbers to be honest they're very similar and the quality difference there is a bit of a difference yes definitely uh, let's have a look at the speed tape here. So I'm just going to basically just... Oh, that's really good. That's... Yeah, that's excellent. Just look at that. Yeah, I think what's more impressive for me is not the image quality because it's it's probably a bit sharper. In fact, it's definitely sharper when looking at steam gauges, but for touch screens and, you know, glass cockpits... It's still not where it needs to be, to be honest. Uh, but for ghosting and smearing, that is a big difference. Right, another thing I want to try now, actually, now we're near the clouds, is just moving my wing around because that creates smearing in the past. Let's go on the outside view as well. Oh, yeah, that's not, that's not an issue at all, is it? That's really good. Wow, no, that's really impressive. That's the least amount of ghosting and smearing I've ever seen. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not quite as crispy as TAA, but this is really close now. Oh, Sobo, I really, really wish you would watch my videos because uh, you would see how important it is right now to get this mask sorted for glass cockpits because then we could run... DLSS 4.5, no problems at all, all the time, 
with even high fidelity aircraft that need that sharpness for those glass cockpit displays because this feels great and the clouds as well look fantastic sometimes you get a bit of smearing there as well and this this looks really good yeah no i'm impressed this is with the pimax micro oled by the way running an insane resolution uh, which is being upscaled by ds4 yeah no this is feeling good right what i'll do now folks to uh, cause i don't want to take too much of your time today I wasn't going to make a video today, but this is really important. I'm now going to try preset M. Again, you can change that in the DSS swapper. I'll show you that again. Just go to the preset section. You don't need to mess about with NVIDIA Inspector or any other way of doing it with config files. Just download the DSS swapper tool. It's brilliant. It works. Make sure it's the latest version. And you can see there, drop down list and you can pick your preset. Right then folks, welcome back. We're now running preset M, which I think is supposed to give you better performance, but not quite as good image quality. And overall, yeah, I think it probably is a little bit less in image quality. I'm interested in the ghosting again. So let's just try this again by just going down and up here, looking at the speed tape. I'm going to get all sorts of uh, warnings in the cockpit. That, that still looks really good to me. And interestingly, I've just looked back on the VR footage. And when I did this, it actually looks worse on the VR image that's recorded than in the VR headset. This actually looks better. The There's not much ghosting. I mean, there is ghosting there, but it's nowhere near as bad. And that's fine. I'm getting all sorts of warnings here from Bitchin' Betty. <laughs> Um, so yeah, in terms of performance, this probably does perform better. I mean, thinking about it, I am running quality mode still. Let's try performance mode, which I think is what is recommended anyway. So we go back to VR, VR graphics. This is such a geeky test, isn't it? I love these geeky tests. We will try DLAA in a minute as well. Let's go to performance, okay? Um, we'll put rendering on 40. That's supposed to be on 40. I don't know why that's on 38. And let's try that to see what kind of performance we can get now. So yeah, even with the 5090, we're nearly up to 60 frames per second. Of course, this is mega, like really heavy cloud here, overcast layers, the whole shebang. But yeah, okay, that's interesting. Be fair, between performance mode and quality, there is a difference, but it's not as big as it used to be. And I'm now getting 60 frames per second here with the micro OLED in these sorts of skies. And again, I'm just going to uh, just have a look at the ghosting. Yeah, that's perfectly fine to me. I think that's really good. Wow. Okay. So really, as a conclusion for DLSS, 4.5 for me. I think for most of you, I think preset M will probably be the better option because you get better performance and you still get a lot less ghosting and smearing. I mean, really, it's I think most people aren't going to notice it at all now, unless you're someone like me who's incredibly picky. Really, really very nice here. Amazing. Perf Look, I'm getting 60 frames per second. That's whilst recording as well in heavy weather. That's really, really good going, that. Very, very good. So overall, I think this is a definite improvement. We're now going to try DLAA. It's not really a setting I use that often, only because it's well, a lot more aggressive and uh, I can't remember what it does, but I know that it's basically very close in fact, if anything, look at this. Look at the difference in performance. This is actually, for me, worse than TAA mode. I don't know. I mean, I know some people disagree, and that's totally fine because this is a personal thing. But I just don't see the point in DLAA most of the time because it is so heavy on performance. Like, yeah, we're basically almost cut, you know, completely half now of the frames we were getting before. Um... Admittedly, though, these gauges look incredibly sharp. But if I just now move to TAA mode, okay, let's just do that now. Let's compare the sharpness and performance between 
DRAA and TAA. Uh, oh no, that's the wrong one. Hang on. There we go. So we're now running. And if I just take uh, foveated rendering off, 5,522 by 5,356, a huge resolution for the micro OLED TAA mode. We were getting 35 frames per second before. Now let's see what we're getting in TAA. See? <laughs> now, this looks way sharper than even DLAA. And obviously way sharper than DLSS 4, especially for this. I mean, friggin' hell. This is where I'm going to get excited by this headset because it, it reminds me again of how sharp it is. This is where it's at for me, folks. And if you can run TAA mode, I think even at 75% of the resolution of this headset, TAA mode is better than full native resolution and DLSS with these gauges. You know, the touchscreen, G3000 layouts, the GTN 750, all that kind of thing. That's where TA mode really excels. So I think for one last test, I'm going to jump in an aircraft with steam gauges with the GTN 750 and see what that looks like with preset M. See you in a minute. Right, folks, so we're now on the runway. With the GTN 750, I'm running TA mode, okay? We're very close to London. And obviously this looks amazing, like in terms of... This display here, it looks incredibly sharp. Let's just do a, a bit of a quick direct to uh, E, G, N, J, Humberside, that'll do. Just so we can assess what it looks like. So, okay, this is fine. We're getting 45 frames per second. Feels very smooth. Full native resolution. Beautiful. Absolutely fine. Now let's switch to DLSS 4 once again using preset M. And then we'll call this video done. But it's it's fun doing these little tests, you know. Let's try um, balance mode. Because I still feel that's probably the better option for most of you. Either that or performance. I don't think quality. I think you start to lose too much uh, performance. Right then. So, in terms of these steam gauges here and looking outside. Oh, look at that. It is sharper. It's actually a bit sharper than TAA mode. This is why, depending on the flying you're doing, it's very dependent upon what settings you run. And my VR settings guide goes through that as well. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're basically just outside London and we're getting 55 frames per second, balance mode. And yeah, that's pretty amazing. In terms of the GTN 750, it kind of looks like it used to really. I don't think there's, in my opinion, image quality there's a little bit of a difference, but it's not massive. I think some YouTubers are probably going to go a bit crazy over this, but I think the big deal here is not so much the image quality, but the lack of ghosting. That has been hugely improved. The algorithm for that has been massively improved. So my advice to you is to give it a go yourself. This is available for the RTX 20, 30, 40 and 50 series cards. Obviously, the frame generation is a different thing. I think that's only available on the 50 series cards, but we don't care about that. This is a VR channel, um, so don't worry about that. This is all about how it works in VR. This looks, this does look really frigging good. Looks very, very nice indeed. And I'm, I'm moving around on purpose to try and get that magenta line to kind of smear. And it's looking pretty damn good to me. Very nice. And these gauges here look super sharp. Now, bear in mind, this is the first iteration of DLSS 4.5 Transformer Model 2. I'm sure things will improve, and I'll give you updates as and when they happen. Remember to download the latest NVIDIA driver, which seems to be working fine. No issues here at all, from what I can see. And run the DLSS Swapper, the latest version, and then basically swap the file over and you're good to go. Please do let me know in the comments below how are you finding DLSS 4.5? I'd love to know. But that will do for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Take care and bye for now.